Hello and welcome on in, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, what's going on? Wade, Elizabeth, Bruce, everyone in chat. Hello and welcome. We're already on Friday. Um, it's good to see everybody. Carol, Afrosia, Jennifer, Bruce, Paula. Super excited about this one. Yeah, me too. So my name is Sam Peterson and I am your host for today's Photoshop challenge. And today we're doing a watercolor effect. So we're going to be mimicking some watercolor looks using various filters and a couple different techniques. Um, you should be able to download the starter file from the description below that will give you the same file that I'm using with the same assets. And let me show you inside of Photoshop kind of what we're going to be creating. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up a little example here. Um, here's one of the examples. And then we also have this one. And we also got this one. So just a few different examples of kind of the effect that we're going to be creating. Um, you can follow along with the images. I'm using or you can use your own assets so definitely feel free to check that out like I said the starter file should be in the description below so first off with this um, we are going to let's start with this image if you look at the asset folder we have many different images um, four to be exact but like I said use your own if you'd like so this is the image we're gonna work with uh, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this because I want to make a backup we actually don't have it in our asset folder so let's back that up uh, put that background or put that backup copy in the asset folder and then I'm going to right click this so first off the first step is going to be convert to smart object we're going to be applying a lot of filters and effects to this and this will save all of them and allow us to edit them and just work non-destructive non-destructively throughout this process so let's close this for now we don't need that up right now um, I'm going to go in and the first thing I'm going to do is go up to filter filter gallery so that will take us in here. It's really zoomed in. I can pan over. I can also do alter option and click to zoom out to get a little bit of a better look. Uh, the first effect we're going to apply is the sponge filter. So you can kind of see how that looks. Uh, by default, it doesn't really have that great of a look. Uh, the brush size I want to be a lot bigger. It's kind of speckly. I'm going to hold on control or command to zoom in a bit more if that gives you guys a better view. And I'm just going to crank the brush size all the way up to 10. You'll see how that kind of changes a little bit. Uh, the definition, um, I don't want to be anything. It's at 12 right now. You can kind of see how that affects it. It's too harsh. I want to crank it all the way down to zero. And that softens it up a lot. From here, same thing, smoothness. I want that maxed out. I'm going to take it all the way up to 15. And we get a much softer look. I'm going to click OK. I got 10, 0, and 15. I like those. They look pretty good. And you'll see down here, under the smart filter, since we made it a smart object, uh, it says filter gallery and it saved that little thing. We can edit it by double clicking this. We can toggle it on and off. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go filter again. And this time you'll see filter gallery at the top. Make sure not to click that because that would just apply the same last step we did. Instead, make sure you go down to the actual filter gallery, which will open up the window. Again, I'm going to zoom out, pan over. And this time we're going to use palette knife. So palette knife is under artistic as well. Click that. See how that looks. Um, for this one, you can play around with the settings. Stroke size, you can kind of see how that affects it. If we crank it up, it gets a lot more abstract, a lot bigger shapes. Uh, if we take it down a lot more, it's going to be a little bit more realistic. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, maybe like 15, 20. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's do 18. And then uh, stroke detail, you can play around with that too. Pretty much just crank it down all the way and up the way and see how it changes. But it looks a little too cubist to me, so I'm going to keep that at 3. And then um, softness, again, I want all the way maxed out. Uh, this time it would be at 10. So 18, 3, and 10 is what I'm using for palette knife. Now we got that. Those effects stacked on top of each other look pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to do something else now. I'm going to go to filter, stylize and oil paint. Now if we play around with this, like if we go to max stylization, um, it starts to look a little too smooth and a little too um, more like oil paint to me. That's not quite what I want. We're going for that watercolor look. So I think three looks pretty good for my purposes. It still has that kind of puddly like edges where you can see the edges of the water and the brush stroke. So I think that looks a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest of the settings the same, cleanliness 10, scale 0 
bristle detail were at nothing and the lighting is unchecked at the bottom. So now that we got our oil paint on, that looks pretty good. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is go to filter, uh, stylize, oh no, no, I'm sorry, we're not doing that yet. We're going to blur and we're going to smart blur. So filter, blur, smart blur, turn that on. And this is going to kind of maintain a lot of the edges intact while blurring some of the interior shapes. Um, you can play around with the radius. Let me give you a better look here, what it's doing. Um, and the threshold. You'll kind of see it affects the, the level of uh, blur and just the sharpness of edges and everything. But for this, I found that 5 radius and 100 threshold works out pretty nicely. We'll let that load for a second. So it just gives it an overall little softness, which I think is is nice for watercolor to kind of mimic like how the colors bleed and everything. Um, so that wasn't really the last step. We got we got one more. So with this layer selected, um, what I can do is actually make this on its own layer. You don't need to. We could apply it just the same way we've been applying this all. But what I could do is just go Control or Command J to duplicate that layer. Right click it. Do rasterize, which collapses all those smart filters. And then we could right click it again, recreate it as a smart object. And that way we're just applying this one effect um, to this. But again, you don't need to create a new layer. You could just apply it to our original one like you, we have been doing if you, if you want. I just think this gives me a little flexibility to toggle this, to mask this effect out if I want. But I'm going to go to filter, stylize, and uh, find edges. So from here, we get this kind of outline effect that looks pretty crazy. I'm just going to turn this layer to multiply. And then if you toggle this on and off, you can see it gives it a bit more of a stylized uh, look. And I think it mimics that effect of watercolor pooling up at the edge of the brush stroke pretty nicely. How it sharpens those edges. But in a, in a way that I think looks kind of like watercolor. <clears throat> and what I liked about this is you can uh, mask it out a bit if you want. I'm probably going to leave it more or less the same, but I can go down to the bottom of my layers panel here, add layer mask, and make sure I have black selected. Black conceals, white reveals. I'm going to select just like an airbrush. And what I could do, if there's like edges that are too hard, like if I don't like all these hard edges here um, in the interior, I could mask those out. If I thought this arm was too blotchy, I could soften it by masking out that find edges. Uh, find edges, I think, works best on the outside of shapes. Like the edges of the hair and the face. Um, but I don't always like it in the interior. If you want to smooth the skin out, you could do that. But I think the skin actually looks pretty good. Uh, for the most part, I don't think I need to mask that. But I like the flexibility that having this on its own layer provides. So I could name this layer find edges. Um... And what I'm going to do from here is go ahead and group these two layers. Control or Command G to group. And I'll just call this filters. So those are our filter levels or uh, layers. I'm going to do Control or Command Shift N to create a new layer. Just call this background. Because we don't have a background currently. So I want to put that below the filters layer. And I'm just going to select white for that. Fill that in. You can see now we have a white layer behind it. And that looks pretty good. Um, let's see. I think what I also want to do is grab this paper texture from the asset folder. And do a controller command J to duplicate it and drag it outside of our asset folder so we can use that. Hide the asset folder, make sure that's not in our way. I think I didn't drag it out fully. Drag it out a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to set this paper texture, which I will name paper texture, because we're going to have a lot of layers. It's good to name them. I'm going to select uh, multiply. And that's just going to give us this uh, little effect. But it'll be more apparent once we start masking it out. Oh, what's going on, Annika? Good to see you. Welcome on in, everybody. Who's this, Robert? What's going on, Robert? We got Kevin in the chat, Biola. I don't know if I missed anyone from the beginning of the chat. Welcome on in, everybody. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions, of course. Um, next week, also on Friday, we will be doing like a review stream. So if you guys have any questions from any of these challenges, just let me know. 
Interesting how you have to use various effects to get a watercolor effect. Yeah, so I that's a good point. Um, I wanted to mention if you go into the filter gallery, you'll see different effects like dry brush is a pretty popular effect a lot of times for this kind of look. Uh, there actually is a watercolor effect. I just personally don't care for it too much. So there's a lot of flexibility. I know some people use the cutout filter. Um, so you can play around with combining these effects, but I think the thing is just kind of to look what you're trying to get out of each one, like if you want certain softness or stylized look. Uh, but these are the ones that I personally thought look kind of good together. Multiply layer. I don't know, are we? Oh yeah, we just did a multiply layer, of course. Frank caught it. All right, so from here, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna mask this out so it looks a little bit more painted onto the paper. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my filters folder that had those original filter effects in it, and I'm gonna create a mask on it, on the folder itself. This little button down at the bottom of the layers panel, little rectangle, mask that. And what I'm gonna do is uh, with black selected, I'm gonna do Alt, Delete, and that fills it in with black. Sometimes if you ever need to fill in a current layer um, with your foreground or background colors here on the left hand side, uh, you can use Alter Option Backspace or Controller Command Backspace. Um, so I wanna start completely masked out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint it in. So we're gonna select white to reveal. We're gonna select our brush tool here on the left hand side. And you can select any brush you want. Um, if you're using a mouse, I recommend cranking the flow down quite a bit so you can get like an opacity buildup. Or you can get those softer brush strokes. Uh, if you're using a mouse, you need to use flow to kind of get that effect. Or opacity, I suppose, but I like to use flow. Uh, I'm gonna do Alt, oh, whoops, Control. Oh, I got white selected for both of these. Let's try that again. Select black, Alt, Delete. I'm not gonna use that brush. I'm going to use Kyle Webster's watercolor brushes. And if you wanna get those, Go into your brush panel here, click this little gear icon, you can do get more brushes. This will bring you to a website with all the brushes, and I believe the watercolor packet is at the top, so it should be easy to find. It's just called watercolors, and you can download those and install them, and it has an obscene amount of brushes. Here they all are. Uh, we're just gonna use a few for time's sake. <laughs> it would take me forever to try all of these, uh, but I found that the ones near the top, a couple of those I'm gonna be using. This uh, Kyle's Real Watercolor 500 Giant, I like for um, kind of building it up softly. So that's what I'm gonna do here. It's kind of this cloudy softness, which I think looks pretty good, works pretty well. And I'm just gonna use that for the base of it. I like how the edges turn out. I think it looks pretty natural. There's also this brush kind of diagonal up from it this one with six, that I think is pretty neat because it has this kind of watercolor effect that looks like the edges are pooling. Do you see that? Do you see how around the edges it kind of has like a more opaque effect? So I'm gonna kind of just click this around the edges. I like how it has a bit of like that realistic pooling effect that I think is pretty neat. So this is just kind of, you know, do what you want, do it to taste, have fun with it. Just control Z if I don't like anything, kind of dabbing around here. And from here I can also use this other brush. So below the 500 you'll see this speckly brush. Let me show you that a little bit better. And this one's called um, Alcohol. So this one is a bit of a spatter brush that I think is kind of neat. So if you want like a spatter effect, there's also, I think, um, a spatter brush set in the effects brush pack that Kyle's made that I've used before. But this one's in the watercolor one, so why not use it? Kind of get a little bit of, a little bit of that effect here. It's pretty good. Thank you, Kyle. Once again, amazing brushes. Yeah, so there's a million of them. I mean, you can never... <laughs> you can try these out forever and they're always going to be more to experiment with. There's just so many. So check them out. And I'm just going back in with that soft 500 brush, that cloudy one. We're using three brushes here. We're using the cloudy one, uh, the one that has six at the end that kind of gives that pooling around the edges, and then that spatter one, just to keep it simple. But, you know, use whatever you want. So from here, I think this looks pretty good, but I don't quite care for the colors and the brightness. It feels a little uh, not quite right to me. 
So I want to play around with uh, with uh, brightening that up a little bit. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create um, a new adjustment layer. We're going to do levels. Just brighten this up here. So I don't want to... I don't know if you guys can hear that. There's a very loud dump truck outside. Dump truck, garbage truck. Um, I'm going to crank up the brightness a little bit. I might even mess with these mid-tone slider and put that up a little bit just to soften some of those darker tones. Sometimes I like that that look. Um, and then I'm going to try a color look up. If you want to try something different, we can also do a layer, new adjustment layer, color look up. And these are fun to play around with sometimes. If you go to here, click the first one, and you just use the arrow keys, you can scroll through them just to see if there's any look that kind of speaks to you. And I actually like that last one, that fall colors look. It's pretty neat to me. I could adjust the levels adjustment here to get kind of an in-between. And one thing I don't like about the levels is it's kind of getting rid of those edges of the paint that I like. I mostly just want to brighten up the center. So what I could do is I could go into my mask for my levels adjustment and actually use a soft round brush and just mask it out around the edges. What I want to kind of convey is just masks give you a lot of flexibility where you want the effects and controlling things. So I want to bring those edges back because I like them. But I think that looks pretty good. If anything's too intense, like the fall look, the fall color lookup, I could lower the opacity. So again, masks and adjustment layers give you a lot of flexibility. So here's our effect. Um, let's see where we're at. All right, not too bad on time. Let's go ahead and try something else. So you'll notice that this technique was kind of tedious if you wanted to apply this to multiple images because we had, I think, four or five effects that we applied. And if you're ever doing anything where it's the same thing every time and you know like, okay, it's this filter at these settings, this filter at these settings, you can just create an action to apply this to future images and to save a lot of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask all of these, sorry, not mask, I'm gonna group all of these by shift click, have those top ones selected, shift click the bottom, control or command G to group, I'll just call this man. This is our, our folder for that. I'm going to take another folder, or sorry, another asset image. Uh, let's get our dog. Control or Command J to duplicate it, drag it out of the asset folder. And I'm going to create a new full or uh, a new layer. Words are hard today for our background, just like we did before. All right. So for this one, if you guys haven't done actions before, I think they intimidate some people. I think they're kind of scary sounding or they sound very complex. This is actually really straightforward and simple. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a window up here at the top. We're gonna to click on this action window or it'll pop up our action window. You can see I've already created a watercolor setting here. Uh, but if we wanna create a new one, we'll just go to this brush, create a new set, or sorry, brush. I'm fumbling my words. Create a new folder, and then this will be a new set. We'll just call this watercolor. I'll put watercolor too, because I already have one. And then from here, we're gonna wanna go into this plus icon, which is create a new action. Click that. We'll just call this watercolor, watercolor eyes. And click record. So now it's gonna be recording our actions. You can see the little record button here is pressed down. From here, our first um, action, or our first, uh, Thing that we did was going into filter gallery and we did sponge filter. So I'm going to do this kind of quick because we already covered it. If you need to know these settings, just watch the beginning over. Uh, but we did 10, 0, and 15. So I'm going to click OK. Oh, OK. No, I, I bungled this, guys. I just realized I did not do this correctly. Let's, let's do this again. Let's do a little mulligan here. All right. I'm gonna do uh, watercolor two. Learn from my mistakes. All right, so we're gonna create a new action. This will be watercolor 
eyes. There we go. Record. All right. So I think what I forgot to do is smart object, of course. So right click, convert to smart object. Now we'll see that recorded there in the panel. That's what we need to do. So now we'll go into filter, filter gallery. We'll do sponge 10, 0, 15. Looks good. All right. You can see that recorded. Uh, we'll go filter, filter gallery. This time it's palette knife. That was the second one. And um, I think we did 18, 3, and 10. That looks good. And then we did uh, filter stylize oil paint. 3, 10, 0, or 0 0.1 and 0. Yeah, that was our settings. No lighting. Looks good. And then we did filter blur. We did that smart blur at five radius, a hundred threshold. Looks good to me. And this time we won't make a new folder or a new layer for this find edges just for the sake of time, but we can go into uh, filter stylize find edges. And what you can do is you'll see it added it to the smart object. So you can double click the little icon to the right of it. And it's going to load that for a second. My computer's uh, it's running pretty slow today, so bear with me here. It's trying. It's trying its heart out. All right, and we're going to change the mode to multiply. So that can be all done within this one layer. Click OK. And then we can stop. So those are all the steps I want to record. You see the little record button still recording all our actions. I'll just click stop. So that should work. Um, so let's try it out. We got our effect here on our dog. We can mask him out. Uh, we'll do that in a moment. But let's try this effect out on another image. Let's duplicate this portrait. Make sure I drag that out of my asset folder. Let's try this on her. So we can do watercolorize, uh, play selection. Make sure that's selected, and I'm hitting play. So let's see what happens. Hopefully this works. Watercolor effects at the push of a button. Yeah, so anytime you have something like this where it's like, oh, I don't want to apply all those to all these other photos I have to do. If it's the same thing each time, you just make an action. So it's you can see it's loading on the layers panel there. It's putting all these filters in place. It's running the process. If you have like a million different steps to your action, you know, it's going to take a little bit to load. But now all these can be toggled on and off individually. They can be edited by right clicking those. Um, you could double click these and change the settings for them if you want to tweak anything. But for the most part, I think that looks not too shabby. So what we could do here uh, with the time remaining. Actually, did we do it on the last one? No, we didn't. All right, so I kind of forgot one little step. Um, on this guy, if you guys want, you can take it a step further because we have the, um, the masking that we did, but we never did. Let's turn off the color to look up in the levels. We never did like manual painting and I want to show that a bit. So controller command shift in and I'll just call this a paint layer. And what you can do is you can actually take those watercolor brushes uh, that we talked about before or really any brush that you want and paint manually. So again, if you're using a mouse, it helps to have a really low flow, but you can color pick with alter option and I can just kind of like brush over a little bit on the shoulder. Maybe I want that brighter. And this is just kind of, um, maybe I'll take this uh, watercolor image off. If you want to like have a little color seeping, you know, from there, like it's, it's washing out a little bit or soften any edges or any manual sort of um, painting effects, this is a good place to do it. You could even do some, some sort of splatter. Like if we want to take some brown from the beard and like splatter it next to here or some yellow from the shirt, kind of do that. Maybe brown from the hair. And this just allows you to 
push the effect even further so you're not relying 100% on these effects you know that Photoshop is is coming up with you can also do a little bit of like illustration on top of it as much or as little as you want really but you know that can help kind of sell that authentic look a little bit more so I'm putting all those folders back on and you can see with that paint layer it's a little bit extra you know it's just I think it helps sell that manual uh, traditional painted look because we are actually painting it a little bit so from here you can kind of do that to whatever you want if we were doing this with the dog we could make a um, we could make a new masking layer paint that out and do the same thing we're on that mask we're just painting in white kind of where we want to for this little pup using any different brushes that you think look good this is kind of the fun part where you can experiment with it a bit more and uh, just have fun creating some texture and make sure to pl put that um, that watercolor paper effect above because that helps a lot set that to multiply you know we can get some pretty cool effects so I'm out of time thanks so much for joining hopefully this gives you some fun ideas to play with some fun painting techniques and styles uh, the ability to use actions where it saves time. Uh, thank you, everybody. Definitely check out the Discord. We got a Discord where we're giving feedback, getting feedback. This is where you can post all your challenges. Check out the challenge page, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one, everybody.